Hello everybody, this is Barzan. Today we're going to talk about cemeteries. I even have my Resurrection Mary t-shirt on. Um, I want to go over Nick Retta. Um, if, if, as you know, in the past, in the year 2011, he was busted. Okay, he's in the Elm Leaves, the Tribune, and several newspapers locally in the Chicagoland area. The Chicago Police Department picked him up in the Chicagoland area that he um, was impersonating a police officer. And in these articles, he had stated to the police that he was a funeral director, he was a state representative son, and a cop son, and that he was a cop. And I'm wondering, I'm starting to think about this, and yes, according to Joe Foscos of American Post, he's related to Salviano, so some of it is true, but I was going over the fact that he's saying he was a funeral director. And I'm wondering how truthful that is. I'm thinking it is. Here's what happened. Um, you know how you can do psychometry and get an impression on something? So I got, I tried to think of an, an um, a depre uh, impression of where did Nick Retta put missing person, person Anthony Catalano's body? And I got a flash, and I got a picture, and a feeling of a cemetery. Then it dawned on me. He goes, to, in Facebook, whatever, he goes to a mortuary college, okay? Um, Worsham Mortuary College, I believe. Point is, the kid's morbid, but he's infatuated with the death. And then I was thinking, well, wouldn't that be a perfect place to put a dead body? Think about it. There's one right along Elma Park. Everybody is out there looking for woods, right? They're out there with cadaver dogs and looking through the woods. What about the fact that he might have buried Tony Catalano because he has connections as a funeral director? Maybe that is the truth. Maybe he is a funeral director or works alongside funeral directors and have, has these connections. And so maybe that is a possibility of where he put missing person Tony Kilano's body. And to me, that makes sense. Okay. Um, the other thing is I want to go over the condition of missing person Anthony Kilano the last time I saw him. That was June 2008. He was sitting with a guy by the name of Spike, which is his good friend. And Tony Kilano was staring straight ahead. He was just looking straight ahead as if to be in shock. And for that whole year he was acting strange. At three hours. And I am I wanted to find some of the people that were regulars. I could come up with 29 regulars that hung around with Tony Calano at three hours that whole year. If they weren't, yeah, if they didn't go uh, at Three Olive, they went to Nick's, they went to El Salutes, they went to G uh, Giannotti's, Gibson's. These were all regulars that hung with Tony seven days a week, okay? And, um, you know, there's still danger in the neighborhood anyway. I mean, there's a guy by the name of Steve that is really dangerous. There's a lot of people. These are all goons. The police department, Chicago Police Department, Detective uh, Fuller, he scolded me because you mean to tell me, he goes, uh, are you a nurse? He says, you mean to tell me that you left Tony Catalano alone in the condition of the mind that he was in with a goon? Is he a doctor? And the thing is, is that yeah, there's a chance for an OD, uh, a big chance that he was vulnerable. But that whole year he seemed wired and he seemed to have a premonition, okay, a premonition that um, I think he knew that something was going to happen to him. This happened to a cousin of mine where a year before he died, he died in a motorcycle accident and was another cousin's awake and he fainted and it, sure enough a year later he died. Wonders never cease with psychicness, you know, that's why I believe in psychics and stuff and I talk to psychics a lot. The thing is, is that what if Tony was tricked by one guy that he knew and got him in contact with this Retta, somehow they knew each other, because he was acting mighty weird. He came up to me, he, he fetched me, okay, came to my job, find out where I was, okay, 
and he was acting mighty weird and just like with the police department in the paper he was acting weird with them he's a strange person now we know he's morbid he goes to a mortuary college I mean who's in who likes those but the thing is is that that's why I think as a funeral director he that could be exactly where the body is at Tony and nobody thought about that um the thing is is that Michael de Phillips Jr. he was alive because I had just seen him within a day of that okay and I saw him uh, which is Nick Retta. So the only one dead at that time or missing was missing person Anthony Catalano. So I'm thinking that, that there's the connection there. And um, he might be trying to either work, either blame it on Joe Messina, which is his family member anyway, his first cousin, or maybe he works with Joe Messino, and they have all kinds of dead bodies out there. I mean, they're the mob anyway, you know? But that's something that I never thought of. It just dawned on me, okay? So just think about that. Why does he want to be a funeral director? He, he tells the cops he was probably telling the truth. Okay, so that's a that's, that could be a very good lead, so make a note of it. Another thing is I still want to go over the... Um, the condition of Tony's mind at three hours in 2008, he was, seemed to be wired. He was just going like, ah, walking through the room. He seemed very wired, and he was just staring ahead like he was in shock. Desi, the bartender, our favorite bartender, Lou, the owner, or Sale, the doorman, there was a lot. I found 29 regulars that hung at three hours. Okay, and I'm trying to get together with those people to get a combination of people that happened and hung with Tony, missing person Anthony Catalano all the way until he disappeared. Now, Michael DePhillips Jr. never hung with any of those guys in the neighborhood. Okay, he might have gotten the connection through Nick Rutt, but there was Michael DePhillips Jr. never hung with them. Okay, he's a much younger person. So, I think a lot of the stories from um, Joe Fosco are fabricated, okay? He, he concocts things and makes them together to make a nice story, but he didn't know that he would meet up with people that actually knew and hung around. They knew all the same people, okay? Um, these people went to Nick's. They went to a lot of the people in the last couple of years up until it burned down, of course, talked to me that they went to Horseshoe Inn, okay? And I found out later from the cops that that had to do, they caught the guy with that. And it had nothing to do with the guys in the neighborhood, okay? So, and the thing is, is that I'm interested in finding the people that I knew at Three Olive. Uh, they know that I had a website out there called The Bar Zone. And then now I'm dedicating my uh, website to Missing Person Anthony Catalano. And I have many pictures on there called Friends Are Plentiful. And you can see all the pictures of a lot of people that were at Three Olive, which really, and I, there's another thing I want to go over, is that there was a lot of detectives that went there, and I talked to some detectives uh, when I first called there three years ago at the police station, and the one, one detective that I talked to, he talked to me about Hector, the owner, and he owned the flower shop of Three Olive. These, guys, these detectives had every opportunity to do all this, to investigate this two, three years ago. See what I'm saying? I know there's something sneaky in Sneakyville out there. There's many different leads to work with, and that's why I'm trying to encourage people to come forward and see what they can come up with. I think that there's a possible OD. There might be an OD uh, with Tony Catalano. He might have gotten so wired because he was wired that the guys beat him up. The guys used to hang at a boat owned by uh, downtown somewhere, owned by a guy by the name of Sale. He, uh, the guys used to hang at a cabin, okay? The cabin, I do not know where. If somebody, somewhere, some waitress that hung around those guys, because a lot of the waitresses were friendly from Three Olives that knew and overheard something, a bartender could come in here. Um, where was that cabin at? There's all room for places for dead bodies to be. I think that the guys might have beaten them up, okay? He might have... It might have been that he was just wired, but there's a lot of leads here. But if we, but going back to Nick Rada, that is 
that is a big time thought and I never thought of that he might really be a funeral director he wants he goes to mortuary college and he might really have all these connections with funerals this is please think about it if anybody has any comments if you have tips you of course you can call the police department at 7127 I mean 312 Seven four six eight two eight two. Otherwise, go ahead and make your comments here. Um, thank you. The bar zone.